Hi everyone, it's Kate from Fold Line. I am back this week with a new video for you all. This week we are doing the first in our series of sewing bee posts. I know, it's back on our screens, thank God. Um, I'm sure most of you feel like this couldn't come at a better time. So we've got 10 weeks of shows and each week um, after the show, we will post up a video and a blog post of patterns. We try to match the patterns that were featured in the show, basically put on detective hats to see what we could find. So. We, last night was the first episode. Um, I will say now that this is, um, there will be some spoilers in here. So if you haven't watched it yet and you want to, maybe don't watch this until, <laughs> until you've, um, until you've watched the proper episode. And also there is a blog post as well to go alongside it. So anything mentioned in here will be on the blog post so you can go and have a look. Right. So what I thought we'd do this time, um, the show split into three different sections. So there's the first section, which is like the sort of, um, God, I can't remember what they call it, but you know, they all make the same thing. They all make something. The second section is like the upcycling part. And then the third section, they have a theme each week and they all make a pattern based on the theme. So I'm not gonna do the upcycling bit because to be honest, for those of you who watched it, it was quite mad what they made. And I feel like the, finding patterns would have just been impossible so we're going to do the first one which um the first section and then the last section um yes so i have thoughts on the show um before i get into it i thought there was a really high standard of makers this year i thought it was higher than last year um for sure when they started like everyone really nailed it um i thought it was a nice mix of people as usual it seems really friendly um and people with lots of different tastes, I think, was really nice. I think you saw with the tea dress challenge at the end, like people um, picked quite different stuff, but everything looked pretty great. I don't know how they do. I must be. I'd have been so stressed trying to sew in that, you know, in that type time scale. But anyway, so let's get started. The first section um, was they all had to make a wrap skirt, a quite a simple wrap skirt. Um, we found I found three patterns which are pretty close they're all quite similar actually the patterns but i thought i'd just pop them up so that you've got them um i will say that if you have the sewing bee book the wrap pattern um is in there so you wouldn't need to get anything else if you've got the book already um and for those of you who haven't seen i did a review of the book last week so i'll pop a link down below so you can go and have a look at the review of the book as well if you're interested so the wrap skirt um really simple oh I should come in with a segment here legally we are not allowed to put I've got screenshots of all the patterns and the pictures and legally we're not allowed to put anything up so annoyingly I can't show you the line drawings of anything because we're not allowed to so I'm gonna have to describe them and I hope that kind of works for you guys so a very simple wrap skirt slightly a line with a button at the side um, the first pattern I've got, which I thought was almost spot on, and it's free, woo, is um, the wrap skirt from In The Fold. So this comes in sizes, um, sizing, 10 sizes. So approximately a UK size six to 24. There'll be a link down below that you can go and look and find it. But yeah, I thought this was really spot on. It wasn't as A-line as the ones that they were making in the, the the wrap on the um, one on the show was slightly curved and this one is very much straight. So I thought that was a really good option. If you're looking for something with a slightly more curved hem at the front, I thought the Fior skirt from Closet Case Patterns would be really fantastic. Also got a button at the side. Um, the Fior skirt actually has, I'm sure, I wonder if I'm saying that correctly. Um, the Fior skirt also has this really lovely side pocket, which I think actually is really useful. And this one comes in sizes doo, 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 um, six to 20. Um, again, there'll be a link down below. This is available to get on the online shop as well. Um, yes, I, I, yeah, I think those two would be really good for the wrap skirts. So the final section, um, and this is <laughs> there's quite, obviously the first week there's a lot of people. Um, it was, the theme was tea dress. So they all got to pick a pattern based around that theme and the concept of a tea dress was um, basically wearing a dress to a tea dance in the 40s. Um, 
in the show they said that it should come sort of below the knee. Um, I thought they were really, what everyone picked was really interesting, so I'm going to get cracking. Right, so the first person was Matt, and his was called a prim and proper tea dress, and um, I'm really pleased because we found the exact pattern for this one. So I will show you it, um, and you can have a look. So it's a 1940s tea, it's a vintage pattern. Um, you can buy it from... Um, Etsy, there'll be a link down, link to this. Um, so the, the feature of the pattern is it's got this really interesting sort of front, I guess they're almost princess seams, but the, the seams are kind of closer towards your, your centre front rather than sort of right over your bust. Um, so these two panels come down to the front and then it's got this like little layer of, you can see kind of gathered, a gathered panel in the front. Um, I've actually got quite a lot of vintage dresses and this seemed to be, that sort of gathered panel at the front seemed to be quite a common theme, especially in the 40s, because I, obviously fabric at this point would have been rationed and it means it meant that you could add a little bit of full, fullness to a skirt, but you obviously wouldn't have been able to have a full gathered skirt because it would have taken up so much fabric. So I'm imagining that might be why they have these little gather sections because it makes it the skirt look a bit fuller. Um, it's got this kind of little collar and really lovely bow at the front. Matt did a really nice thing where he had a fabric in two different colours and he had the main dress in a mustard colour and then he had the belt and the bow in a in a contrast but it was the same print which I thought was really lovely. Um, this comes inside, oh it's just in one size I can see from here, so bust 36 and hips 40. Um, it's beautiful pattern, I really, really love it. So I was really pleased we found the exact one. Um, next up, we had Claire's 40 floral, 40s floral tea dress. Um, this was a really fab vintage pattern as well, um, which I think we have got spot on. It's a butterick pattern and it's the number is B6485. Um, it's beautiful. And really complicated. I have to say, I thought um, this was a really hard dress to make in the allotted time, and I thought she did an amazing job of it. In um, Claire's version, she had two different colourways, so she had the front panel of the dress in a floral, and then the sleeves and the back of it in a plain, which really I thought was a really clever idea. It looked beautiful, um, and it had this sort of amazing sort of gathers round, yeah. I just think that old patterns, they just cut them really interestingly. Like you look at the line drawing for this and you're like, how would that go together? And I bet the pattern pieces looked amazing. So yeah, I thought that I was really chuffed that we found that one because it was pretty, I spent quite a long time looking for it. So I was pleased to have found that. Next up, we've got Peter's Festival Tea Dress. This was the one that really got me. I looked for so long and I just, I found, I've got two options and they're not perfect, so if anyone else has an idea of what I could, you know, if you see this and think, oh, I know that pattern, please let me know down below because I'd love to hear because it's been annoying me all morning. So what I ended up finding, which I think is kind of like a sort of, it's like a hack of two different patterns. So the first one is the new look 6447. Um, I picked this because it's got that panel, you know, underneath the bust. Um, I'm, I'm describing it as if you've seen the line drawing. So his version was this sort of 1960s sort of raised collar that came quite high, um, very fitted top, and it had that classic tea dress where you have a band underneath the bust, and then the skirt wasn't that fitted, it, I mean, wasn't that flared, it was quite kind of close fitting. So the new look 6447, that gives you the panel that you get across the front, that sort of curved panel. The skirt was quite similar in terms of the style as well, but the thing that this doesn't have is that really high nice collar. This dress does come up quite high, so you, I think that if you use the collar from this next pattern, I think you could mulch the two into one. So the other one I've got is the new look um, 6145. Um, it's got that collar, it's got the perfect collar. I think if you could botch the two together, you'd, you'd end up with it, but I, it was actually quite hard to even find a collar that sort of stand up, sort of, to me, feels quite 60s 
shape, collar. But yeah, I thought that was a really interesting one and I'd love to hear if anyone knows the exact one. So next up we've got Mark's Flower Power Tea Dress. Um, this was quite a simple princess seam dress, panelled skirt, big statement sleeves. Um, this was great, I've got the exact pattern because a couple of, I did notice, did anyone notice that they flashed a couple of the patterns this time and I managed to pause it and find the number. So I was really chuffed, so I know this one is right. It's the V Vogue, um, 9239. Um, it's got the panelled skirt and I know, I, having seen it on, I definitely know that this was the right one, but I love those big sleeves. I thought it was really beautiful. And I loved, he used a kind of big, ballsy, tropical brim fabric, which I thought was fab. And it worked really well and made it look, I think this dress could go either way. It could look really, really vintage or quite modern. And I think his choice of fabric made it definitely look more modern. Um, and I thought it was, the fit on it as well was fab. So that one I was really chuffed with. Um, next we had Nicole's Caribbean Carnival dress. Again, they slipped and showed us the pattern, which for me is like, yes, um, because I think I would have really, really struggled with this because it's a vintage pattern. Um, it's a vintage um, Donna Karen for Vogue and it's 2784. I'm gonna pop a link um, to Etsy because there's one for sale if anyone really wants it, but. I have seen a few of them kicking around so they're not like impossible to get hold of. Um, the thing that I love about it is it's got this sort of wrap at the front and it kind of ties around a couple of times and I think it's such a beaut pattern. It's also got, you can see from the drawing, I think it's got like little go days in the skirt um, which look lovely. Um, Nicole, oh yeah she did put them in which is amazing in the amount of time she had. Um, it's, it's a really, I thought it was a really complicated make when you look at the pattern. I think they, how long did they have? Four or five hours, not very long to make this and fit it to the model. Um, and I thought hers was really beautiful. Um, yeah, it looked fab, fab. So yes, that one is bang on. The next one is Fiona's floral ruffle tea dress. Um, the pattern for this, again, I this one is spot on. It's the Simplicity S8875. Um, you can see here, it comes with three variations. Sorry guys, my laptop is here because otherwise I'd never be able to remember any of this. Um, it comes in three variations. The variation that she did is variation D, which has the like floaty sleeves. Um, it's quite an interesting cut, that sort of um, slope underneath the bust, which to me looks like a classic tea dress, is then got some gathering, which means you don't need bust starts. And then it's got this curved ruffled hem, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so she sort of mix, she's got the top, the sleeve of view C with the bodice and dress of view B, B, C, sorry. D mixed with C. Whew. Sorry, I'm getting too many patterns, too many numbers. Um, but yeah, I was really chuffed with finding that one because that one is definitely beaut. And I think this would be lush for summer if if we're, you know, if we're ever allowed out of our houses ever again. Right, so next up we had Angelia's Elegant Tea Dress. This is another vintage pattern. This is the Simplicity 8249. Um, I thought that this was so difficult. I mean, w when you look at it, what a tricky make. So it this one is also... a perfect match, this is definitely the right one. Um, so you can see from it, the, the line drawing, it's got these sort of gathers around the bust, so above the bust and then down by the hip. Um, it calls for like a drapey fabric. She'd made it in something um, in a really lovely bright blue colour. But there's a lot going on, I mean in terms of the construction and getting the fit right, I it was just amazing and unfortunately she didn't have enough time to get her sleeves on. But the rest of the dress was made really nicely and I was so impressed with it. I, I, it's interesting when you look at what people make. I, I don't know about you, I sat there thinking, would I have gone for something so difficult on the first week or would I have just like played it a bit easy, which I probably would have done. Cause, um, but yeah, she really went for it and it's, it was amazing, I thought. So next we've got Ali's Country Fair tea dress. Um, this again is a perfect match. 
um, I was really chuffed actually because I she'd flashed the cover was like flashed in front of the screen but the number wasn't on there and so I got obsessed with it until I found it so it's the Simplicity 8384 um, yeah it's got that really nice it had like a handkerchief hem so where it dips at certain points um, buttons down the front and then um, and then a panelled skirt it's quite flared um, I think it's a really nice shape I think I really liked um, the version actually when I'm looking at it, I really like there's a sleeveless version with a straight cut skirt which I think would be such a nice summer dress and it's such a classic make so she what she did what I thought was really interesting in terms of fabrication she had a floral dress but she had the placket at the front in a contrast fabric which looked really really beautiful so yeah I thought that was a really great make and, and the construction of it was really good as well so this was probably my most tricky pattern I think he must have well I don't know thoughts on a postcard because I really could not get anything close to this so Alex's dance floor tea dress looking at it I'm wondering whether he cut it himself because there were so many different features in it and as as um, Patrick said, it, was, it felt like it was all these different eras in one dress. So I'm wondering whether he cut it himself because I couldn't find anything, if I'm being really honest, that close. Um, the best that I could find was the McCall's 7381. Um, it has that slight wrap at the front. It has that curved hem. And if you wanted to make it into a waistband, I thought you could do it that way. But yeah, I really struggled. So if anyone has got any thoughts... Um, that, that I hunted high and low and I think that was the closest I could find couldn't find anything with that sort of wrap and the cold shoulder detail so yeah I, that one did stump me a little bit so yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts um right N now we have got Hazel's African wax print tea dress this one also got me a bit stumped and I thought this one would be quite easy to find so if anyone knows the pattern I'd love to hear it's the V9328. Um, I think this actually is a really lovely, um, great summer dress. Long maxi. Obviously, you could shorten it, and um, but it has that same feel to it, the sort of but V and the buttons. But n not. I mean, it's not. It's not perfect. So I'd love to hear what you thought. Right. Next up, we have got Therese's 50 swirly tea dress. Um, this was easy for me. I looked at it straight away. I was like, yes, I know exactly what that is. Um, it's the Betty dress from So Over It. I'm sure it is. Um, it was like a perfect match. And I'm sure a lot of you looked at that and said, I know that dress. Um, classic shape, fit and flare. It's got bust starts and waist starts and then a full circle skirt. I thought she made it beautifully. The skirt was lined. It was perfection and I think if I had been I actually think I'd have gone for this pattern if I was given given the challenge of making the tea dress so yes I thought yeah pretty spot on last but not least we've got Liz's ditzy grunge tea dress um this one again I saw it and instantly thought oh yes I know I know what what the pattern is for this so I'm pretty sure it's the Shelby dress and romper from True Bias this comes in sizes 8 to 20 um yeah I'm pretty sure it is it's got princess seams um buttons all the way down the front um a panelled skirt which means that you can add in the slits um and there's a version that has slits as well so it's yeah I thought this was pretty good there is also if you like the shape of this pattern the Shelby comes with a um, romper version, so a sort of jumpsuit version to it, which would also be really lush for summer. So yeah, I was really pleased with that. Right, that is it. So I'm sorry, it's a very long video for the first week, but obviously they will get shorter as, as people go. Um, oh, maybe I should, I don't think I should say who went this week, or maybe I should, but we're at this week. I was really sad to see um, Angelia go. I thought, she'd done like a really good job but it's just a bit of a shame she just didn't get the sort of stuff finished on her tea dress but you know what can you do that is life um right that is it from me this week i hope you enjoyed that we will be back next week on thursday every thursday we'll be releasing a video and yeah don't forget to go and check the blog post out too 
Have a good one. Bye.